Oh, hi. I'm being watched, apparently. Or not, I don't know. I have four subscribers, and I keep promoting my channel on Facebook, and it's not that many people are subscribing. What's wrong with you guys? I just got text messaging back on my phone plan, and at first I wasn't really sure how I feel about that, because I don't really care about text messaging. And, and that just gives me one more gateway for people to just, you know, bombard me with messages 24-7. But you know what? I'm okay with that because, quite frankly, I can now send picture messages and it makes the camera on my phone not completely obsolete. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about text messaging. What I'm really here to talk about is books. I realize that I spend a lot of time talking about just theoretical stuff and ideas and philosophical things that come out of my own brain, but I kind of want to start getting into the actual literature that I like to read. As I showed you a few videos ago, I was reading this book called The Plucker by Brahm. I guess he's, he's probably more well known than I give him credit for, but he's not like J.K. Rowling or, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien. I kind of want to take part in this activity that another vlogger named Carrie Hope Fletcher started called the October Club, which is basically a book club where you read a book a week for a month, and that month happens to be October for her. I know I'm a little late to the party because it's already the, what, the 11th of October, so I'm probably going to just extend my reading until mid-November or something. Fortunately, I already finished the first book that I'm going to review for this book club online, and that's going to be The Plucker, so uh, I'm going to talk about that. I also have a couple more books that I'm planning to read and finish within a week. Lately I've had a lot of reading to do for school, like articles and some novels, but I just want to choose books that I really want to read that I haven't gotten around to yet. So I'll show you what the other ones are that I'm planning to use. Now that I'm done the plucker, the next book I'm going to start is going to be Looking for Alaska by John Green, who is also a vlogger, and I've heard only good things about him. I've watched the Vlog Brothers channel for a while now, and they are awesome. Another book that I haven't read yet is uh, The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, and I'm going to start that after looking for Alaska. I've read a lot of Neil Gaiman's books, and I haven't read this yet because it's one of the newer ones. And that's three books, so I only need one more for the purpose of the October Club, and I'm not sure what that's going to be yet, so I'll decide when I'm done The Graveyard Book, I guess, or you guys, or wh whoever's watching this video, which is like no one. If someone ends up watching this video and thinks I should read something for my fourth book for the club, then I will take those recommendations into account. Otherwise, I'll just think of something on my own. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about The Plucker now. And I read this book in like three nights, and the print is pretty big too. As you can see, yeah, that's the, a lot of the pages have illustrations too, so not all the pages have to be read. The book is divided up into three parts, and I read one part a night one weekend, like two weekends ago or something like that. This was a very different novel than any I've ever read, because I haven't read a picture book since I was, like, real young, I guess. And <clears throat> I really like the tone of this book. The art really adds to the atmosphere. It's it, This isn't just a book. It's also sort of an art album that tells a story. I, I don't want to spoil this book for you guys, but I'll show you some of the pages and the illustrations. The cover art is a warrior jack-in-the-box. You can't tell he's jack-in-the-box because he doesn't have a box, but his name is Jack and he is the protagonist. And You can totally see the reflection of the camera off of the cover of the book. And he is a toy who becomes basically a warrior due to unlikely circumstances. The premise of the book basically revolves around this boy named Thomas, whose father is away at war, because this book takes place during World War II, I think it was. And his father comes back from Africa with, a, like, a tiki idol thing. Oddly enough, he gives it to his son to hang on the wall in his bedroom. The, the tiki statue falls off of the wall in the boy's bedroom, and it breaks open, and an evil spirit comes out called the Plucker. Uh, the, the author, Brahm, did a lot of studying of... African tribal folk tales and whatnot. But the other part of the mythos behind the book is about toys that come to life, which is pretty reminiscent of Toy Story. So the basic premise of the plot is that the toys come to life, and it is their duty to kill the plucker. Because the plucker is only physically manifest 
in the realm where the spirits of toys make them real people. Anyway, I'll show you some of the illustrations in here. Um, on the back cover is kind of uh, Jack's uh, love interest. Her name's Angel, for obvious reasons. Uh, she's a really beautifully designed character, actually. Um, in the plot of the story, she's basically a collectible that, that Thomas has in his room. But she's also kind of like the uh, damsel in distress, I guess, in the realm where they're real characters. Here's a really good illustration. It's kind of panoramic. Um, it's a battle between the toys and creatures called foul things, which are basically the plucker's minions. Uh, there's a clown with a spiked mace. And there's Jack just being a complete badass. As I was reading this story, I just kept thinking to myself, huh, what if that happened in Toy Story? I kept picturing like Woody and Buzz just getting magical powers and just going completely like badass against Sid's uh, mutant toys or whatever they were, because some of those toys did seem pretty possessed. The way that the toys actually get enough power to challenge such a evil demon thing as the Plucker, or the Abiku as it's called in uh, African mythology, is that the boy's African nanny um, has knowledge of these kind of things, and she's kind of like a mystic. So she implants the petrified heart of a snake into Jack, which gives him supernatural warrior abilities in order to challenge the plucker. So he basically becomes a superhero of toys. She actually says in the text, It's done. Use no longer a toy, but a weapon of the Lord. A viper. A devil slayer. I really like that uh, concept as an analogy for someone being a channel for a message, or a channel for art, or in this case, a channel for kicking butt for the justice of good. Because kind of the uh, most important theme of the story is the fact that um, this demon is going after this child and the ones who have to defend him are the ones he threw away. Kind of also like Toy Story because Jack was thrown under the bed and discarded for in place of new toys. So he's called upon by Maybell, who's the nanny, to slay the plucker and it's up to him because he has the heart to do it. And not just the heart that she puts in him, but the bravery and the passion to actually take back the place where he belongs. It, it, this is definitely, it, it has pictures, but it's not a kid's book. So yeah, if you get the chance, I would definitely read this. Unless you find such a dark story that has to do with toys and childhood um, to be too much of something that would scar you for life in terms of good memories. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. I have to get to class, and next time I will be talking about Looking for Alaska by John Green, which is a very different genre of novel than The Plucker.